guys, and welcome to another weekly wrap-up. If you have noticed that this is a different angle for me, it's because we just finished doing a live stream and I didn't feel like moving, because I'm lazy. And now is the time where we talk about all the things we did this week, where I was not lazy and did many things. So did Gretchen. We did all of the things coming off of our hiatus last week, and we're going to be talking about all of the things that happened this week. So get ready. Hey guys, it is good to be back. And on Monday, what else could I do with my From the Notebook than talk about where I've been, what I've been doing, and where I'm going. Um, so I talked about some of the events that kept me from you guys uh, over that little bit of a hiatus that we had, and I also talked about a then-upcoming giveaway, which is no longer upcoming. It is happening right now, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, but yeah, it's basically just talking about like graduation and um, one of the biggest events that I've been a part of on campus here, so... Yeah, watch that. I get really flustered and kind of sad and slightly manic. It's good. Watch the thing. My Monday post was me wrapping up the genre thon, which was not last week, but the week before that. But I couldn't do my wrap up while we were on hiatus, so it got pushed a little bit. I talk about the books that I read, how I totally completed the challenges that needed to be completed, and most of that is thanks to the fact that I was going on vacation <laughs> and had time. So yeah, definitely go check out that video. Plus, I totally read one of the books that I had in that TBR, but you won't know which one until you watch that video. On Wednesday, and yes, I am skipping Tuesday because we did not have time to do Betwixt content on Tuesday. Sorry, wait for Saturday, it's happening. Um, but, so, on Wednesday, I had a Worth It Wednesday of Angel Fire by Courtney Allison Moulton, slightly inspired by the fact that me and my roommate have become obsessed with Lucifer recently, uh, the TV show. Uh, this is not having anything to do with Lucifer, but um, it does have to do with angel lore, except for instead of the main character in that one being like, you know, oh, my boyfriend's an angel, she's like, kick-ass and cool but also involves angel lore. So yeah, you should well, read that post to see why that book and its series is worth it. On Wednesday, I had a review of the third volume of Rat Queens, which I was not super chuffed about. Um, I talk about why I still think this series is worth it in that video, so you should definitely go watch it if you haven't seen it. Even though I didn't feel that this volume was particularly strong and the fact that we're on artist number three, possibly going into artist number four for the next volume. Um, it's had a sordid history, this poor comic, and I care about these characters so much. So I talk about all of the reasons why you should read it, even though I didn't like this volume. In that video, um, why didn't I like this one? It was a little bit all over the place, and I didn't feel like it got together like it should have, but you know. Not everything has to be perfect. I admit that it would be nice if it had been perfect, but it doesn't have to be, and I will still love it despite that fact. On Thursday, I finally released that giveaway that I've been talking to you guys about for so long, and an interview with the author, Kristen Page Madonia, the fabulous author of Fingerprints of You and the upcoming Invisible Fault Lines, was really nice enough over this event to sit down with me, do an interview, and sign this copy of Fingerprints of You, which I am currently running a giveaway of on the blog right now. It also has a swag pack that has temporary tattoos, coasters, bookmarks, stickers. So yeah, I have a lot of stuff because Kristen Page is amazing, and that interview was something that I really jived with. So read it, enter the giveaway, um, do the thing, because this is a really pretty book and I cannot wait to give it to somebody. On Friday, I had another video. Oh my god, I did three videos this week, plus the live stream, plus this video. All of my content was videos this week. Crazy. Um, I did a video where I gave some tips and tricks on how to pick translated text and how to read translated texts. I did my thesis on Korean translations. Gretchen has been talking a lot about her YA thesis, um, and I didn't really talk about mine because mine happened years ago. <laughs> it's, it's not currently happening, so it's not as much on my mind. But translation is a thing that I love and care about. It's something I want to do in the future. So it's something that I felt I needed to talk about. And a couple of you guys had asked me to talk about it, and I figured I should start by telling you the best ways to go about reading translation if you don't already do it. 
On Friday, I posted my really, really sad April wrap-up. Yes, it was a couple of days before April ended, but trust me, it was not going to get any less sad. I read four books in April. Four books. Granted, that does not nearly count all of the reading that I've been doing for school, but since Goodreads doesn't count, you know, scholarly articles or sections of text and stuff like that, I couldn't really, you know, count those either. So I've just been busy, and I talk about that um, and the books that I did read and how sad I am about that being April. So yeah, you should, you should read that. It's really short. It's really short. I keep mentioning this live stream that we did. That post comes out on Saturday, which hasn't happened yet, but will have happened when this video is up. So, this post comes out on Sunday, the live stream post came out on Saturday, we did a live stream, and we talked about book guilt, where we talk about the specific books that we feel guilty about, what sort of circumstances around books will make us feel guilty, whether or not we should feel guilty, we aren't sure yet, we didn't really come to a conclusion there, so if you have any thoughts on what makes you guilty, or whether we should feel guilty about stuff, definitely go watch that live stream and comment in the comment sections below. It's meant to be a discussion between us, but also with you guys. We do it live so that if you happen to show up, you can participate as well. And while that has not happened yet, because uh, this one was super spontaneous and happened right out of nowhere, um, you know, doesn't mean you can't talk about it after the fact. So go comment on that video. Welcome to the portion of the video where we talk about, well, usually talk about, what we read um, in the week since the last video. However, since it's been several weeks since our last wrap-up, which was also a text wrap-up where we didn't really talk about the books we'd read anyways, um, some of us, by which I mean Michaela, have a nice hefty stack of books to say that they read um, in this longer period of time. I still only have three books um, that I read since our last video because, again, my reading habits have been sad. Um, and the first one of those was Notes from Underground by Fyodor Dostoevsky, which, if you can probably guess, was a book for school, and I didn't actually read the whole thing, but I'm counting it because I read enough of it, and it was really annoying, and I did not like it at all, and you will never see a review of it because the review of it would literally just be me screaming, WHY?! for several thousand words. So, just, just gonna leave that there. I did the thing. I got to count it on Goodreads. <laughs> the second book, uh, which I featured quite heavily in that live stream Michaela just talked about, was Get in Trouble by Kelly Link. I had the hardcover once, but I finally gave it back to Taylor after having it in my room unread for over six months. It was really sad. Really, really sad. And Taylor needed it back. Um, I have a review of that plan to come out in the next couple of weeks because I'm really excited to finally be able to share my thoughts um, because if you happen to, for some weird reason, have been with us long enough to have seen the book club episode that we did on Kelly Link's collection of Magic for Beginners, you might know that I didn't particularly enjoy that collection and I was really upset that I actually liked Get in Trouble for the most part because um, I don't like liking anything that Taylor likes. I don't. I don't like doing that at all, but, you know, here we are. And then the third book that I read this week was Renee Diaz's The Rose and the Dagger, which is the sequel to The Wrath and the Dawn, which was like my favorite book of 2015, if you happen to see my 2015 wrap-up, and the book was not as good as I wanted it to be. It was, um, yeah... Uh, that, I am pushing back my review of Get In Trouble in order to review The Rose and the Dagger next Friday, and hopefully I'll have a video of that up if my um, schedule permits. But yeah, I loved The Wrath and the Dawn, and I liked The Rose and the Dagger, and that was really, really sad for me. Um, so, yeah, look forward to that coming soon.
while Gretchen was dying last week while doing a million different events and still trying to do schoolwork and all of that stuff, I was on vacation. So there were a couple of books that I read uh, during that time. The first of which was The Time Traveler's Wife by Audrey Neffenegger. Neffenegger? Neffenegger. I said that right, I think. Um, I liked this. Um, it was definitely poignant and definitely moving, and I had a hard time wrapping my thoughts around this, but I think I'm going to watch the movie and then do a Flix episode on this, because I definitely have thoughts on how I felt the book, uh, was successful, and why I was perfectly fine with it jumping around in time when usually that is an issue for me. I need books to sort of be linear or have a structure to the jumping around, whereas this one was pretty chaotic. It, it, it was a little bit chaotic. Um, it was super sad though, guys. Like, really sad book. So if you haven't read it and are thinking of it, just be aware that you're going to be sniffling. Uh, and that might be awkward when you're sitting in a car with your family for the third day and they're just confused as to why you're all of a sudden crying. <laughs> the next book I read, or rather I should say I finished because I had like 20 pages left and for whatever reason had never finished it um, and that was The Blue Girl. I also finished that while we were driving down, and that was weird. <laughs> That's the, the best I can give you. It was weird. I don't know. I had written a review of it, but it didn't go live properly, and now I don't know if I want to put it out because it's been a while and my thoughts have changed and there's other things I want to post, so maybe if I'm lacking for content I will release that as like a review from the dregs type thing. But, yes, I finished that on that ride as well. It was National Poetry Month, April, so I have been reading a bunch of poetry at work to post to the social media of my library. Um, one of the things that I ended up reading in its entirety was Voyage of the Sable Venus and Other Poems by Robin Costa Lewis, and she won the um, National Book Prize for Poetry, I believe, for that collection. It's definitely a collection you should read. Um, I feel like it pertains mostly to African American women as opposed to everyone in general. It has a lot to do with the way that they are objectified specifically. There were definitely things that I could relate to as just a woman in general, and perhaps even stuff that men can relate to, and if not relate to, perhaps learn a little bit more about how women feel or how historically women have been represented. Um, I mentioned in my Goodreads review, and again, I'm not sure if I'm going to be doing a full review of this one because of this fact, that I didn't feel like I fully grasped it, and because I had the library copy, I couldn't highlight or underline or anything, and I definitely think that this collection needed that. It needed to be interacted with, as a lot of good poetry does. Um, anyway, it was very insightful and interesting and creative. And if you haven't checked it out, I would say that it's worth checking out. And that's from someone who doesn't read poetry very often. Next! I read The Vegetarian by Hong King, and this was the last book that I read on vacation. Uh, it's really short. I got it from the library. I'm going to have to give it back soon, but before I do that, I need to do a review of this. It's actually going to be my review next Friday, because I'm continuing my translation. This obviously was translated from Korean. It's one of the picks for the International Man Booker Prize. I completely understand why that was, because this was kind of mind-blowing. Um, I have thoughts specifically about Korean culture, because like I said earlier in this video, my thesis was on Korean works and translation as this is, so I can maybe give some insight into this that a lot of people don't have, and because it has such hype around it right now, a lot of people are talking about it, and there are things that they are confused about that I actually think is more deeply rooted in Korean culture than it is in a poor translation. I think this is actually a really good translation for what it's doing, and again, I think uh, we need to talk about translated texts differently than we talk about normal texts, and that's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to be reviewing this one. When we talk about what I read this week, there's one singular thing, and that is the third volume of Rat Queens. That's one thing, and it's a graphic novel, so it's super short, and you see the difference of me on vacation versus me when I work all of the hours at work. I can barely read anything. 
Um, however, there's a full review of this up, so I'm not going to talk about it all that much. You can go watch that video if you want to hear my full thoughts on why this was not the best graphic novel I've read in a while. I am in the middle of a couple of pretty chunky books, so hopefully I can get through those, but I'm not promising anything right now. We'll see what I can get through in its entirety. But the only thing this week, one graphic novel. There you have it, guys. Our weekly wrap-up back from hiatus. So not quite weekly, but whatever. Um, still using that title. We are so happy to be back and here for you guys. Um, and so we are already have some great plans for things that we're doing. And, you know, we're really excited. And though I will be a train wreck in motion until graduation, and I'm really, really busy, we are back. We are dedicated. And when I fall down, Michaela will pick up the slack because she's better than me. But... <laughs> She's screaming no, but you can't hear her because my headphones are in, so we're all okay. After graduation and into the summer, don't forget that we have our normal schedule of Bibliomancy for Beginners book club episodes. This summer we're doing a couple of themed sections. So first one being we're all doing YA picks because um, I hate being sad all the time. Um, <laughs> and no one liking what I pick. And then we're also doing a couple of themed picks, a themed month about books that are either by the same author or the next in a series of books that we have all read together. So we're super excited about that. Also during the summer, we would love to do another Nostalgia Junkie series, by which I mean that series that Michaela and I and Casey did a little while ago on all 10 Pendragon books by DJ McHale. However, there is a serious fight going on right now between bibliomancers that like you know threatening friendships kind of fight so you need to go either to Michaela or I's blogs or the Goodreads group and vote whether you guys would rather see us do His Dark Materials by Philip Pullman or the first couple of books in the So You Want to Be a Wizard series by Diane Duane. Please vote. Save friendships. Do the thing. And while you're at it Go enter that giveaway that I mentioned. Still there. Still happening. Gonna be happening. But, you know, get in those tweets now. They rack up. Do the thing. Um, I think that's all my announcements. I'm out of breath. You're out of time. Whatever. Let's go. Let's go read. Let's go read more. Let's go watch videos. Let's go make videos. We're really happy to be back, guys. Bye.